Good afternoon, Collington County School District freshman class of 2024. This is your principal Maurice Cannon and I am so happy to invite you to experience us um, here at Cougar Nation, providing you with the best educational opportunity um, and to enjoy your high school career. We're doing this very differently than we normally would. Um, now that I'm the only person inside my office, I can take that off. Again, welcome to Collington County High School. Um, we're doing freshman orientation differently, as you can see, um, that this year it is virtual, it is digital, and it is um, just not the norm for us here at CCHS. But we are um, definitely determined to make this one of the best years academically, socially, engaging uh, with each other, and just want to make sure that we are supporting and meeting your needs as new members of our Cougar family. So um, if you just don't mind, be patient with me while I navigate my computer screen and while I, while I walk us through some very important information centered around um, the freshman year experience. The freshman year is uh, one that's going to be filled of so many new experiences, so many wonderful opportunities at where you're building relationships, even with um, people that you know, but your relationships are going to grow and become more richer, uh, more dynamic. Um, and you're really going to build certain bonds that will unite you for a lifetime. And you may experience certain times where you have friends um, who are a part of a circle that you um, had coming out of middle school, and you may find yourselves throughout that high school experience growing um, a little separate from each other, kind of <laughs> distancing yourself uh, from certain individuals, um, and that's okay. Um, the high school experience is a very robust experience, and you're going to get a lot of things right. You're going to rock it out, and you're going to get a lot of things right while here in high school, and also, equally so, you're going to get a few things wrong, um, and that's okay because we live and we grow, and we grow from the experiences that we have. So um, again, my name is Maurice Cannon, and I am your principal here at CCHS, and I am supported with, um, by a dynamic team of administrators, team of professional school counselors, clerical staff, especially teachers, support staff, and we are an awesome team here, and we cannot wait to invite you here to CCHS and actually have opportunities just to engage with you. So um, there are a few things that I'm going to walk us through um, during this presentation. Um, I do have a video slide share that I'm going to share with you um, in um, just a few minutes. Um, but I have to pause and navigate my um, slide share and share my screen. So if you just um, hold tight while I pull certain information up and actually share my screen with you. So give me a moment. And one of the first things that I would like to begin with is um, a video um, presentation. Um, and this is from our Harbor um, School Renaissance Group. And what I really like about this group, what I really like about um, the information that they share is that they just really bring details of information down to the student level and want students to um, really understand through the media of the time uh, what it is that excites them about life itself as well as um, being a high school student. So just hold tight for one moment. I'm going to start this uh, presentation coming to you from Justin's Renaissance and Harbor. sitting in an auditorium, your principal is about to give a speech, or there's a Jostens rep there that's going to have a class meeting with you guys. Whatever the situation is, you're about to start on your high school journey. So we wanted to give you guys a few tips and ideas and just thoughts to think about so you guys can start off really well. And starting off high school, it can be super scary. I remember starting off my freshman year, I was new, I didn't know anybody, I felt like I was an outsider. It can be incredibly uncomfortable. It can be exciting, it can be confusing. But there's a lot of things that happen to you in high school because it's a really big, important time in your life. And it's a time of a lot of firsts. Some of you guys 
you're on track, you're gonna eat like 311 chicken patties. Some of you are gonna have like 5,000 slices of pizza. You're probably gonna stream over a thousand hours of TikTok. Some of you guys are gonna eat like two pounds of hot Cheetos and Takis. That's literally disgusting. Don't do that. You're gonna fall in love like 10 times because you were positive that they were the one. Some of you guys are gonna peak in high school. Some of you guys are gonna figure yourself out after high school. Some of you are gonna love high school and some of you are gonna hate it. You guys are gonna have an array of different experiences. So we wanted to give you guys a ton of different perspective and a ton of different tips on how to successfully make it through high school. the moments that matter to you along the way. You know, the harbor, they really get, they get it right. You know, we're, we're going to have so much fun together while you are here in high school, but you're going to have um, just a lot of unique experiences that are going to be unique totally to you. And it's going to put you in a different space um, as far as your self um, identification, you just really understanding who you are um, as a student, who you are as a person, uh, what excites you, what, you, what gets you hype and really involved, and those things that you just feel as if it does should not consume you. Um, so I'm just really, I really love. Um, being a principal, being an administrator and working with students every year. And the longer I'm in this business um, from year to year, seeing students grow and watching students grow and mature from their, that freshman year, that um, first time walking through the door all the way to them commencing and graduating. Um, so we're going to have a lot of fun watching that social um, development uh, with you and also just seeing and watching how you engage with each other and not just your peers, but also how you're engaging with your faculty members, your teachers, your educators, um, and all adults um, in our um, community, our school community. So um, that was the harbor. And from time to time, we have a ch um, chance to watch some of those videos and really talk about those together. Um, but right now, I want to um, shift my screen and share some information pertaining to being a high school student and some of the um, priorities that we have here at Colleton County High School to ensure that you're receiving the best education to prepare you for life beyond. So if you give me a moment, let me stop sharing my screen that way. And I'm actually going to bring, bring up a slideshow presentation
And give me a moment just to make this adjustment. And my goal is not to take too much of your family's time um, during this freshman orientation, but just really want to make sure that we're providing you with some de details to get you acclimated to this freshman year of high school. Um, a lot of people will say it, you know, school is very important and you've done school for so many years that you pretty much have it down pat, you know, what, what it is you need to accomplish um, along the way. Also, high school is a little different than other school experiences that we've had as far as when it's um, more accountability, more of self-management, more independence that, um, that you're expected to have more than you've had in years past. So with high school, one of the things that I just always love to talk about with freshmen, fresh men, um, is that it's a fresh start a new opportunity for you to engage in school. You're now um, transitioning from that middle school environment to a high school environment, and you've had a summer break, uh, a little more than summer, um, since we've been out of school since March, as far as physically being in the building. But you also have an opportunity for a new start. Um, and with that new start, you have a chance to reinvent yourself as a scholar, as a student. So where you may have had some academic, um, academic um, challenges in the past, you're able, able to overcome those obstacles that may have gotten in your way previously, um, as well as those things that you've done successfully as a student, you're able to even kick it up another notch now that you're following yourself um, based upon what's called your grade point average. Um, some students, they just want to um, get through to the finish line, and some students want to get to the finish line um, at a very, very high level to the point of trying to achieve that goal of being number one in the class, the valedictorian, the person with the highest grade point average in the school, or the salutatorian, the, that person with the second highest average, and be the ones to um, give those final speeches um, to the class upon your graduation. And those are awesome um, accomplishments for students. But not everyone has to shoot for that goal. Um, shooting for daily su success um, is an um, awesome goal for anyone to have. So a fresh start um, is an opportunity for us to engage with new teachers, um, new opportunities, getting ready for life after um, high school. Um, what colleges uh, would you be looking at and starting in um, the ninth grade? That's what you need to start when you walk through that door. If I'm interested in a college or a university, let me start getting an idea of where I would like to be. Um, and what you do now impacts the rest um, of high school and your future. Um, the freshman year is a very important um, starting point very important launching pad that will determine how things are going to be navigated for you throughout the years. So about high school, um, academics are at the key, but high school has so much more to offer. Um, extra, extracurricular activities beyond the classroom, um, becoming a part um, of athletics or arts, the band program, our chorus program, our drama um, program that we have at school, um, NJR OTC and leadership beyond um, learning in the classroom, but being a part of that organization um, outside of the classroom um, is really something that a lot of students find high interest in. Our clubs um, that we have inside of school, we have academic um, centered clubs inside of our school. And we also have clubs that are not centered around academics, but centered around your personal interests. Um, one of the things that we did um, last year when it came to clubs was um, a chance to participate um, in clubs during the school day um, that we had um, a lot of success with students selecting something based upon their personal pathway or personal interest from gaming clubs to board game um, clubs to dance clubs to clubs that want to um, organize to step 
and be a part of um, entertaining others, um, as well as a fishing club where actually students were fishing in the ponds here on campus, um, catch and release, uh, but still something that they were enjoying. Um, cycling clubs were something that we wanted to get started, but COVID-19 kind of put an end of us being able to expand our clubs um, during the springtime, but we are looking forward to bringing a lot of that back when we return to the school. Um, also, students have an opportunity just to get involved in many other activities. Um, and your teachers will be explaining much more about that, um, as well as your um, school um, professional counselor. Um, your school professional counselor, um, known as guidance counselors in other settings. Here, we um, recognize our school counselor department as our professional school counselors. In ninth grade, when we onboard all of our students, um, all of our students are within, our ninth grade students are within the freshman academy upon coming to high school. So when students coming out of the middle school, you select your school of study. And um, in our schools of study, we have our um, CATS uh, program, our career and technology um, school of study. We have our HCA program, health career school of study. We have our leadership school of study, leadership in the arts and public service, um, LEAPS um, school of study. We have CNT, our Cougar New Tech, um, school of study. So coming out of middle school, you selected a school of study uh, with your school counselors there and all ninth graders are still a part of their school of studies. But when it comes to our school um, onboarding here at, in high school, all freshmen are collectively together grouped by that school of study, but we all are housed in our freshman academy physically here in the building when you do come back to the building. Um, and with this concept, we're able to make sure that we are attending to all of the student needs as ninth grade students. So within our freshman academy, our professional school counselor is Mrs. Stevens. And Mrs. Stevens will be sharing a lot of information to students as far as school activities, school events, um, checking in with students to see how well you're doing academically. Um, prior to you going to your 10th, 11th, and 12th grade years. So all freshmen, um, your counselor is Ms. Stevens, regardless of the school of study that you're in. And Ms. Stevens has a Google Classroom page where she's already sharing um, interesting information with our students. And to join her Google Classroom, please use the code that you see here, TZFGQ63. Again, that's T. Z F G Q 63. Please make sure you join um, this Google Classroom with Mrs. Stevens so you don't miss out on important information coming from our professional school counselor department. So what else can we say about high school being a fresh start? The fresh start on this slide you can see um, is focusing on your grades and your grades are equivalent to your grade point average in school. So if you have um, a lot of C's, then that will give you a certain grade point average. The more A's that you have, the higher your grade point average. Um, the D's that you have, you get very few points uh, for your grade point average. And if you unfortunately score an F in a class, not only are you failing that class and you have to repeat that class, but you're not getting any points for your grade point average. So the higher the grades that you're making inside of, your, inside of your classes, the higher your grade point average. And this is very important for all students. Even if you don't believe not right now, your ninth grade year that you're going to college and you're like college, psh, whatever, I'm not interested in college. So many students make the mistake of just meandering that ninth grade year and not focusing. As a result, by the time they become seniors and you start getting that excitement and that energy from your classmates around you because they are identifying colleges that they want to go to, they're selecting colleges that they want to go to, they, they want to leave home, they see college as an opportunity to get out the house, be out on your own, have your own dorm room, your own um, just whole life situation on a college campus, um, getting away from home. A lot of students find out that senior year that they played around that freshman year had a low beginning GPA and it's more difficult for them to access college. But 
that's why it's very important to take all of your courses as serious as you can from art to chorus to PE to band. Take those classes just as serious as you would take um, your English and your math classes because every A adds to a higher GPA. Every A adds to a higher GPA. So you want to keep that in mind in every class that you're doing. Make sure that you're excelling, accomplishing your very, very best. Um, behavior um, is very significant when you're talking about high school students and doing the best that you can academically. Your social emotional needs and the way that you respond to things um, is of top notch importance to us as well. And sometimes our um, behavior mistakes can um, put us in a challenging situation where we are not able to enjoy the school environment as much because you feel as if someone's always nagging you, always bothering you because of trying to get you to show a different self within character. And in high school, we do have um, particular opportunities and settings where all of us will collectively talk about our social emotional needs and how do we um, exhibit characters of positive behavior in order for optimum, optimum success. So not just am I behaving in this classroom because this teacher want me to behave, it's very little about that. The goal is, am I exhibiting the right character within this public setting that when I go out to other places, I will automatically be able to excel in that setting. It's not about behaving for a teacher inside of the school. It's about showing a true sense of character that will allow you to be successful wherever you are. Um, high school, as we said, a fresh start, fresh um, group of friends. Test scores um, are always there within the school environment and, uh, and are very important. And your attendance and activities. And that's additional information around this will that we will continue to talk about during this orientation. High school matters. Graduating high school affects your whole life. Uh, better job opportunities coming from your high school experiences and being successful, um, being proud of your accomplishments, your self-worth. Like a lot of times, um, some well, sometimes people say that I'm doing this to make my mom proud. I'm doing this to not let my father down. I'm doing this because granny wants me to do my best. But also, what are you doing for you, for yourself? Um, are you able to find your own growth and self-worth within goals that you are accomplishing? Are you feeling good and proud of yourself because you are meeting a standard of expectation and reaching goals? Um, that's something that we always want students to keep in mind. You know, it's good to do it because you wanna make your mother or father proud of you and you don't wanna let somebody else down. But most importantly, don't let yourself down. Know that you're accomplishing all things because you're doing the best that you can do. Um, Success in high school will also bring about um, success to go to post-secondary education, post-secondary education. High school is also considered secondary education. Post-secondary is what you do after high school. So is it going to college? Is it going to a technical school environment? And, or is it being prepared to go to a career within the military? Um, or armed forces um, and be of service to our country and to our nation? Um, or is it being prepared to go to um, industry and the higher wages that you're able to earn in industry are going to work based upon the character that you leave being prepared from high school? And, you know, you can stay employed and avoid chronic unemployment. The best education that you have coming out of high school will allow you better um, opportunities to navigate the world of work and careers. So our state graduation requirements as um, a high school student, this is something that is very, very different from middle school, from elementary school. You have to earn a certain number and mixture, a code of certain classes in order for you to earn your high school diploma. Um, just because you get older in high school and you're not earning the credits doesn't mean that you will be socially promoted from high school to graduate. Um, unfortunately, there are some students along the way who um, have not focused in and earned the credits 
and they get left behind. But we as a faculty here in high school, we're going to do all that we can to work in partnership with you as students, as well as your parents, to see that you are earning these uh, required units. So you have to have four credits of English, English 1, English 2, English 3, English 4, um, or the equivalency of English 3 and English 4. So that could be dual enrollment um, courses um, at one of our partner universities, primarily the University of South Carolina at Salkahatchee is one of our primary um, dual enrollment institutions. So we have a lot of students earning that English 3 and that English 4 um, at the college level. Um, or even our advanced placement opportunities to earn your English 3 and English 4 credit. Same with math, you have to have four credits of mathematics um, to lead towards your high school um, diploma. And um, that's Algebra 1, Geometry, and the third, fourth level of math credits. But you have to have um, Algebra 1 and you must have Geometry. You have to have three credits of science, and these are laboratory sciences that you have to earn um, in order to receive your high school diploma. And one credit of an elective social studies in addition to the United States history course, a half credit of um, government, and a half credit of um, economics. Those courses are required within our social studies um, curriculum um, in order for you to earn your high school diploma. You must have one credit of physical education or NJROTC or marching band as a credit um, for the um, PE um, for the PE required credit. So remember that um, a lot of freshmen when they enter um, PE their that first year um, a lot of freshmen do very, very well, and they get the PE out the way, so they don't have to worry about that anymore while in high school. But we do have some ninth graders who don't take PE as serious, and they don't dress out, or they don't come prepared to participate um, in the PE um, assignments and activities. And unfortunately, they find themselves failing the PE course. If you fail PE your freshman year, you may not be able to take PE again until your junior year. Some students haven't been able to get PE in until their senior year. And unfortunately, a lot of seniors who find themselves in that situation and not earning that PE required credit, that senior year, they find themselves in a class with a lot of freshmen. <laughs> so in four years from now, do you want to be in a class with ninth graders? Yeah, you're a ninth grader now yourself, but just think when you're a senior, do you, let's put, look at it this way. Do you now as a ninth grader want to be in a class with fifth graders? Ha! Looked at it differently that time. So do you as a ninth grader want to be in a class with a fifth grader? So same thing when you are in um, 12th grade, do you want to be in class with a ninth grader? Um, you have to have one credit of computer and one credit of um, a foreign language or a Kate career and technology education course. And on top of all of those, you have to have uh, seven credits as electives. You have to have seven credits as electives. And if you're going to a four year college or university, they are looking for you to have more foreign language credits than the one required um, for just your South Carolina high school diploma. Um, and a lot of colleges, they would like to see you with at least two to three credits coming out of high school in foreign language. Here, our primary foreign language um, is Spanish. So grade placement policy. How do you go from being a ninth grader to a 10th grader, 11th grader, to a 12th grader? How do you matriculate high school based upon earning your college credits? So first to be in ninth grade, you have to successfully complete eighth grade. Many of you have done that. Congratulations to all of you. Now, going from ninth grade to 10th grade, students must have earned at least six 
units of credit, including one English and one math, in order for you to be classified as a 10th grader. To be an 11th grader, the student must have earned at least 12 units of credit to be an 11th grader, including two English classes and two math classes. And for you to be designated as a senior, a 12th grader, you must have earned at least 18 units of credit and be in a position to complete all 24 required units of credit by graduation. In other words, you have to have 24 earned credits in order for you to graduate high school. Three of these units must be English and three must be math. So this year, you also will uh, participate in state standardized tests and also throughout high school, we still have state tests that students must uh, participate in. And these state exams are worth 20%. 20% of your final course um, average. So the way the performance on this exam, that performance will have a 20% weighting um, within the final average of your course grade. So the end of course exam, any student enrolled in Algebra 1 is required to take this comprehensive state um, mandated exam upon completion of the course. End of course English 2, once you take the English 2 course, you have to take the English 2 end of course exam and Biology 1. Once you complete the Biology 1 class, you have to complete the Biology 1 end of course examination. And again, all of these assessments, the final, your grade, your performance on these tests is worth 20%. It factors in 20% of um, the average that you have for that class. Attendance in high school, this is also very, very important. If you miss too many days in high school, you can be in a situation where you don't get credit for the course. Let me say that again. Too many days, you failed the course. Too many days absent, you failed the course. So not only must you pass the class, but you also must meet the attendance requirement for the course, also known as seat time requirements. So students will lose credit when they have three or more unverified absences in a quarter class, have six or more unverified absences in a semester class, six or more absences for any reason in a quarter class, and 11 or more absences for any reason in a semester class, you will fail the course. Students who do not receive credit due to um, too many absences will get an FA failed for um, attendance uh, with a numerical score of a 51. So if you miss too many days of school and it's not documented the reason for absence, or if you just miss too many days period, you can fail that class. You gotta come to school. And even in the situation of being COVID um, distance learning, those of you who are learning virtually, um, all of us, you have to log in and participate um, in your do now activity or your bell ringer activity in order for the teacher to give you credit for attending class that day. Again, you will have in each of your classes a do now or a bell ringer activity. You must complete at a certain time within that school day in order for you to be marked present that day. If you don't complete that bell ringer and you're absent, you're marked absent, then your parent will have to send um, a, an, an excuse. And the excuse can be brought to the high school, to the front of the school, our attendance office, or they can email that to Mr. Ferguson, whose email is on the screen, or to Mrs. Ruth, whose email is also on the screen. So parents and students' absences, they add up. And this chart is just a way in which um, we can look at absences. Um, unfortunately, some students have chronic um, attendance problems throughout the years. And we know that there's a pattern and we see a trend at high school that students who exhibit um, chronic absenteeism at high school, it doesn't start at high school. Uh, it starts early in elementary, 
middle school and continues to high school. But high school is a place where the rubber meets the road. If students um, consistently don't show up um, for school, then they're not going to pass and they're going to receive these FAs and they're going to have to repeat classes for being absent um, from school. Um, so let's look at this. One or two days a week doesn't seem to um, add up that much, but let's look at it. One day every two weeks is equivalent to 20 days of not being present per year, which equals to like four weeks of being absent. That's a lot of time for a student to miss out on their learning and their education. And over 13 years of schooling, if this is the pattern or the trend of a student, in total throughout their schooling experience, nearly one and a half years of school is missed. And sometimes we wonder, how is it that a student can come to school, come to school, but they struggle in school? They tr struggle to understand concepts and different things in school. Well are they attending school regularly? Because just because you're not there doesn't mean that the learning is going to stop. The learning continues. We just get um, more and more behind because we're not keeping up with being present as far as um, attending school. So attendance matters. Parents, attendance matters. And it's not just the student's responsibility to be present, it's the parents and the adults' responsibility to hold ourselves accountable as the adults as well as the students for being present and engaged so please let's make sure we're keeping an eye on um, the trends of our um, students and children attending school dress code dress code if you are attending school virtually and you're staying home be mindful of your dress no we're not saying that you have to wear your cougar shirt at home, but you definitely should not be logging on and participating virtually in your PJs. Um, take pride in how you look and how you present yourself. Remember, these are life skills that you are learning. Um, my sister, she works from home. She works for Verizon. And every morning when she gets up and she's working for, from home, she has to make sure that she is presentable for interfacing through that screen. Same for our students, same for our teachers. You know, if any of our teachers, they're working remotely and virtually, they are expected to be presentable. And that means we're not in our PJs, we're not in our pajamas when we are teaching you virtually. You should not be in your PJs either. And make sure you take time, you know, to groom, wash that face, get a little crud out the eye, do whatever you need to do to be prepared to um, learn and get yourselves physically um, in a good space to learn. So be presentable. And for those students who are coming to the building to um, learn, make sure that you are still aware of the district's dress code and our um, dress policy and make sure that you are wearing the appropriate clothing. We're not wearing clothes with holes in it. Keep that at the house. You're not wearing ripped jeans with holes and your legs are out and your thighs are showing. We're not doing that. So that's not appropriately um, being presentable and ready for school. So please don't show up like that because you may not be in school that day. You may not stay. Um, and remember the tops that you're wearing, your shirts, it should have, um, if they're t-shirts, then it should represent Colleton County, Colleton County High School, a club or an organization. Um, for a proper dress. So we're still enforcing that. So be mindful of that. And also ID badges, especially those students who are in blended and you're coming to the school building, you must wear your ID badges around your necks. You will receive your IDs um, once you arrive to school, you will receive your ID. So please make sure you have that around your neck. That is a safety issue as well as for anything that you have to acquire that we can scan a barcode, we wanna scan your ID and not have to have a lot of students touching stuff in order for us to make sure that we're doing all we can do to keep everyone healthy and that we are restricting the spread of COVID-19 here at CCHS. Face coverings. Face coverings are required by all students while inside the building. Um, please be mindful that your mask and your face coverings, um, they must be appropriate for school. Um, they cannot display 
um, emblems related to alcohol, illegal or abusive substances, no gang insignia or gang colors or flags um, can be worn uh, while here at school. Those bandanas that are also representative of your personal um, outside groups that you are a part of, can't wear that here. Um, your face mask cannot represent anything that's violent, um, sex, sexual um, in nature, or any kind of obscenities. Keep that, um, please don't wear any face masks that are not appropriate for school. Um, any face masks that are inappropriate for schools or considered something that could disrupt the learning environment um, will not be worn. And on that day, you will get a um, disposable face mask with a warning that we've addressed that as an issue and just a reminder that that should not um, happen again. So please do your personal best to be respectful while here um, on campus and while we engage virtually. Um, be prepared for all of your classes. Make sure that you're logging in on time, that you're paying attention, that you're asking the necessary questions to make sure that you are understanding your learning. Um, please stay organized, study for tests, and get involved in other activities. And yes, we plan to have activities available for students virtually. And if you didn't know, now you know that we do have sports and athletics um, happening here on campus. And they've designed a process that is very, being shown to be very successful of keeping students um, safe and doing this process. They're checking temperatures regularly. They're asking questions to make sure you're being reflective on your personal well-being before attending practice. So if you're interested in sports and you're not um, participating right now, contact Mr. Wayne Alston, Mr. Alston or the school to get his information. Look it up on the website and find information for athletics here at CCHS because we want as many of our students, all of our students to be involved in extracurricular activities. And if you have an interest in sports, come observe, check it out. Parents, if you're not too certain about the safety of it, come and ask if you can observe a practice and um, just to allow that to help you in your decision of whether or not you will allow your sons or daughters to participate. And, you know, just for getting started and coming back into the building, um, I'm going to bring this time to a close right now. And I just want to say congratulations to the class of 2024 for making it to this level to enter into your ninth grade. You know, we are so, so happy to invite you here to Cougar Nation. Please remember if you have any questions or concerns to reach out to us via email or call the school. And if you're not able to speak to me right then, if you call, leave a message. Um, and I will be sure to make sure that your um, concerns are um, given the attention that's necessary to respond to your particular needs. Please also check out our website for additional information that discusses all of our school um, learning options um, here at CCHS. And please make sure families that you have um, the correct contact information on file with us um, through Parent Portal. Those of you who are asking, when will my child get um, their schedule? Schedules will be ready in um, Parent Portal, available for view no later than this coming Monday. Yes, Monday is a holiday, but we'll be working to make sure that all schedules are finalized so you can log into Parent Portal. If you do not know how to log into Parent Portal, please contact um, Ms. Stevens um, or our guidance office and one of our professional school counselors or representative there will be able to give you the information that you need in order to access your parent portal. Students, you must use, must use your Colleton County High School, Colleton County School District email address. You should have received an email from me today that gave information about the learning options. So please, sir, please, ma'am, make sure that you're checking your emails regularly. That's a primary way that we will be communicating with you throughout this year. And that is a necessity in this day and time. So um, uh, I have a few sayings. One is no drama, no mess, no stress. Let's make this ninth grade year one of the very best to start 
here in CCHS Cougar Nation. And also our goal is to educate, explore, and empower you. We wanna educate you with a robust, comprehensive education um, program that we've designed especially for you, but not just learning it um, digitally, but we want to expose you to opportunities to explore that education, educate, explore. We want you to just know how that connects to the real world, not just learning it from a textbook. Educate, explore, and empower. We want to empower you to be agents of positive change, change throughout this community, change within the school, change within our country in order to make this place one of the most dynamic and awesome places to live and serve. Thank you for taking time to participate and watching our orientation. And I salute you and I look so, so forward to working with you, not only this ninth grade year, but ninth grade year and beyond. Go Cougars.